Okay. Fuck. Fine. 808s. <sighs> we're doing 808s, guys. Oh, what? I thought we were doing melodies. I just bought this keyboard and everything. Nope. Nope. Nah. They really want 808s, man. Oh, man. Okay, y'all. We're finally here. The 808 tutorial. In this video, we're gonna be covering a lot, from mixing and arrangement to tips and methods for grimier 808 patterns. So strap in, beautiful people. I'm about to turn you into an 808 wizard. I fucking guarantee it. Well, not really, but I really hope this helps you out. Drop a like if you learned at least one thing and share this with at least one producer who could use some 808 tips. Let's grow the dope content only family and create an era of producers who only make dope shit. Oh, and subscribe. You should have definitely already done that, but I'll give you one more chance right now. And go ahead and tap that notification button while you're at it. Oh, and one more thing. Meet the comment winner. I didn't tell anyone I would be doing this, so shout out to everyone who unknowingly participated by commenting on my last tutorial. Just comment below for a chance to be featured in my next video. Okay, first off, let me explain how this is going to go. I'm gonna break this video down into two larger sections, methods and mixing. Within these sections will be subtopics, three for each section respectively. In methods, we will be covering sound selection, duh, sample manipulation, and sliding technique. In mixing, we will be covering leveling, distortion, and side chaining. There will be timestamps in the description, so if you get to a section you already know or simply just don't care for, you can skip it and go right to the next one. All right, this is gonna take a while, so let's just jump right in. Okay, sound selection. Come on, y'all, we've been over this. Shitty sounds equals shitty beats, no way around it. I created a pretty dope 808 and sub bass kit. The kit is called Paradigm and it has 40 high quality bass 808 samples. There will be a link for the kit in the description below, so definitely go check that out. For this tutorial, I will be using the God 808, but every technique I will show in this video will be applicable to any 808 or bass sample you use, even if it's not in the kit. But still get the kit. You deserve these sounds. Love yourselves, queens and kings. So I have this melody from my Ginsu loop kit called Platinum. I've arranged some really simple drums, so now I'm just gonna lay down a simple 808 pattern and let you guys hear everything so far. Okay, bam, sound selection done. Sample manipulation. This is another one of those things where it's less about knowing how to do it and more about people just not knowing about it at all. So the first thing you have to do when manipulating your 808 sample is pitch correction. You do that first by clicking on your sample in the channel rack. Make sure that you're in the sample settings tab and then right click your 808 sample. Click edit and that will bring your 808 into an instance of Edison. Once that is done, click this little flag icon and select the option that says detect pitch regions. Once you do that, Edison will auto display the main key of your sample. Once you find it, you will need to go back to the channel rack to click on your 808 sample once more. When you've done that, click on the miscellaneous functions tab and right click the note of the key of your 808, which should have been displayed in Edison. For this sample, it's D sharp. This process is done so that your 808 is aligned with the standard musical pitch of 440 hertz. All you really need to know is that it's paramount for your bass samples to always be pitch corrected. That is instantly the difference between a good beat and a terrible beat. Okay, the second part of sample manipulation comes in the form of length alteration. 
This is very simple and can be done by going to your sample on the channel rack, clicking it, selecting the envelope tab, and turning each of these six knobs all the way down. After you've done that, go back to the knob labeled hold and turn it all the way up. Doing this allows you to control how long your sample is played for. As soon as the note ends in the piano roll, the 808 sample will stop playing. So here is the progress of our pattern after I've manipulated its envelope and adjusted the note lengths to my liking. Sliding technique. This is probably my favorite part of creating my 808 patterns. I usually create a relatively basic pattern and then come back to do the slides after I've laid down and mixed everything else, just because I can get sucked into a creative rabbit hole if I'm not careful. The way to slide an 808 or bass sample is simple. In your piano roll, double click your note, click the slide option and make sure that it's highlighted, and then click accept. Once you've done this, you can use a sliding note to manipulate other 808 notes that are not sliding. The possibilities are really endless, so I'm just gonna make a pattern, show you where I placed each sliding note, and give you the name for each technique. These names aren't real, but naming each one will allow you to add each type of sliding method to your toolbox. Remember, subtlety is key, and less is more in many cases. Okay, leveling. This one is actually pretty quick and simple. I already brought everything into the mixer and routed each one to its own individual track. I gave everything a bit of leveling except for the 808. Most industry bass and 808 samples, specifically in trap music, are leveled at negative seven to negative four dB, with the outlying extremes being negative three B for the upper limit and negative 10 dB being the lower limit. Higher means louder, lower means quieter. I almost always have my 808s at around negative 4-ish dB and my sub basses at around negative 6 dB. For this tutorial, it will be no different, so I'm just going to adjust the sample until it's in the range that I want it to be. tutorial covering kicks, distortion is meant to be used lightly on drum samples. Or rather, that's how I use it and that's what I'll be showing here. Anytime I'm using distortion, I use the default setting. I switch this knob from A to B and then adjust the mix until the grittiness is at a level that sounds good to me. Side chaining. Okay, now this, this right here, this is the fucking sauce. A lot of people are scared of side chaining because when it's explained, it's made way too complicated. In brevity, it is the control of one sample's velocity output via the input of another sample. But see, still confusing, still boring. 
So what I'm gonna say about it is that it makes 808 sound cool as shit. If you wanna know more about it, there's a blog post on my site and I'll put a link for that in the description below. Okay, all you need to do is go to your mixer and find the track where you have your kick. Select it by clicking it and make sure that it's highlighted. Once you've done that, right click the send switch on your 808 sample mixer track and select sidechain to this track. After that, go to the mixer track linked to your 808 and open an instance of Fruity Limiter. Switch it from limiter to compressor by clicking comp and then right click this sidechain selection menu and select your kick sample. Then turn the knee all the way up. As I stated before, the point of sidechaining is to reduce the volume of the 808 sample while the kick is playing. Cody has a much more in-depth tutorial on this where he affectionately refers to the process as peacocking. I'll leave a link in the description below so that you can check it out for yourself. I think it's a really helpful tutorial for beginners who want to learn more about sidechaining and 808 manipulation. So now I'm just going to start playing the pattern while adjusting the threshold knob until the kick is pressing down the 808 at a level that makes me comfortable. And there you guys have it. This was long enough as it is, so I won't say much more except thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it and I love you guys so much. If there's anything I missed or anything that didn't make sense, drop a question in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to answer it for you. By now, y'all should know that I'm reading every single comment. We're all one big dope ass family here, so don't be afraid to talk to me. Links for most, if not all, samples used in this tutorial can be found in the description below. Drop a like if your 808s just got way better, or share this with a producer friend, and drop a like if you think it could help someone else out. Let's grow this dope content-only family, and subscribe to stay up to date with future tutorials. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and never stop creating. Just make sure it's dope content only.